Welcome to A Story and a Song. This is Deborah Cohen, and this podcast broadca- broadcasts live on twitch.tv every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Now, today we're going to continue the topic of singing from the soul, not soul singing per se, like James Brown, you know, I feel good. No, I love that kind of soul singing, but we're not talking about that today. We're talking about actually giving your soul, each individual person's soul, a voice. So if that interests you, find yourself a cozy, hopefully quiet place where you can be undistracted. Maybe have a paper and pen to take notes. And I will be back right after this message. Hello, this is Deborah Cohen. I'm so glad you found me online. My music is a variety of genres, starting in the 80s as a new wave singer-songwriter, opening up for Joan Jett in Kenmore Square, Boston. From there, I wandered into different genres, exploring my faith, praise music, interfaith music, and pop, rock, indie music, as well as music for TV, film, and movies. So there's all kinds of things to learn listening to my podcast, A Story and a Song. And I hope that you will enjoy the journey with me and that you will share what you hear. Thank you for listening. And again, this is Deborah Cohen, and I'm glad you're listening live. It's right now on Twitch.tv. I was hoping to add Instagram today, but I ran into some technical issues. So we'll try it again next week on Instagram. My handle on Instagram is at Deborah Cohen Music. So let us talk today about Rabbi Jonathan Sachs' article on singing from the soul. Each person has a soul with a voice. But unfortunately, a lot of people don't know how to uh, kind of access their own primal voice. And we've been talking about this is episode three in a series about singing and giving your voice a soul. I mean, giving your soul a voice, excuse me. Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay, so let's dig right in. And if you're on twitch.tv slash Deborah Cohen Music, I can see you in the chat if you leave me a message live. All right, so with in this particular article, it was uh, we're talking about Hazinu. We climbed to one of the peaks of Jewish spirituality. For a month, Moshe Rabbeinu had taught the people. Now get yourself into that zone of reference if you need to kind of take a breath in. And exhale twice as long and start to picture in your mind's eye Moshe Rabbeinu at Mount Sinai. He had told them, Moshe, their history and destiny and the laws that would make theirs a unique society of people bound in covenant with one another and with God. And that's us today. Because at Mount Sinai, not everybody at that exact time and place were present even though Hashem was also referring to all Jews in the future. And that would be me, and maybe that's you too. It's an eternal reference to the soul of each one of us that's there waiting for you to give it voice. Ah, that just... That's very exciting to me. So he renewed the covenant and then handed the leadership on to his successor, Joshua. His final act would be blessing the people, tribe by tribe. But before that, there was one more thing he had to do, Moshe Rabbeinu. He had to sum up his prophetic message in a way the people would always remember and be inspired by. He knew that the best way of doing so is by music. Yes, 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 yes. So the last thing Moshe Rabbeinu did before giving the people his deathbed blessing was to teach them a song. 
Yay! I love it. I love it. I love it. This is why I'm sharing this article with you. There's something profoundly spiritual about music. And this is according to Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. Not just me. I agree with him, though. I hope you do, too. When language aspires to the transcendent and the soul longs to break free of gravitational pull of the earth, a.k.a. the physical realm, it modulates into sing, singing, song. Jewish history is not so much read as sung. And unfortunately, in today's synagogues, a lot of them I've seen, they read Pesuke de Zimra instead of singing. It's Pesuke de Zimra, Psalms put to song so that you can awaken your soul. But if you don't communicate with the soul through music, then you just maybe sit there and listen only. The rabbis enumerated 10 songs at key moments in the life of the nation. There was the song of the Israelites in Egypt. Look at Isaiah 30, verse 29. The song at the Red Sea, Exodus 15. The song at the well, Numbers 21. And by as a side note, I find it interesting that Rabbi Sachs is using these English Torah references. In interesting. And, of course, Ha'azinu, Moses' song at the end of his life. Joshua sang a song. If you look at Joshua 10, verses 12 and 13. And so did Deborah. Yay! My name is Deborah, D-E-B-R-A. Hers is Deborah, but in Hebrew, it's Devorah or Devorah. Okay. All right. So the Deborah in, in J-U-D period 5, Hannah, 1 Samuel 2. I think J-U-D is for judges, right? Okay. And David, 2 Samuel 22. There was the Song of Solomon, Shir Hashirim about which Rabbi Akiva said, quote, All songs are holy, but the song of songs is the holy of holies, end quote. Wow, breathe that in. Oh, the tenth song has not yet been sung. It is the song of the Messiah, Mashiach. Many biblical texts speak of the power of music to restore the soul. That's what I that's why I sing in the synagogue. To restore the soul individually and collectively on Shabbat. When Saul was depressed, David would play for him and his spirit would be restored. 1 Samuel 16. This is one of my aspirations is to be able to deliver a song to the listener and have their soul be restored. David himself was known as the, quote, sweet singer of Israel, end quote, according to 2 Samuel 23, verse 1. Elisha called for a harpist to play so that the prophetic spirit could rest upon him. And that's another thing that I don't hear much today in the synagogues is mentioning the prophetic spirit of song. So I hope these are all like tidbits that you're writing down so you can explore for yourself and maybe come on the show, this show, and share your findings according to what the Ruach Elohim shows you. Because Hashem shows each one of us individual pieces of his puzzle. And we're meant to share it so that we can put that puzzle together in this journey called life. The Levites sang in the temple. Every day in Judaism, we preface our morning prayers. Ah, I didn't know he was going to mention it, but here it is. Pisuke de Zimra, the verses of song with their magnificent crescendo. Psalm 150, 150, in which instruments and the human voice combine to sing God's praises. Is that what you experience in Pisuke de Zimra? Or are you... Oh, you don't even show up for it because it's so boring. Mystics go further and speak of the song of the universe, what Pythagoras called, quote, the music of the spheres, end quote. 
that this is what Psalm 19 means when it says, quote, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. There is no speech. There are no words where their voice is not heard. Their music carries throughout the earth. Their words to the end of the world, end quote. Beneath the silence, audible only to the inner ear, inner ear, creation sings to its creator. I feel lifted up just even in reading this. I hope that it illumines the sparks within you as well. So, according to Jonathan, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, when we pray, we do not read. I pause for a moment because that should make some of you shiver. We sing. We do not read when we pray, says Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. We sing. When we engage with sacred texts, we do not recite. We chant. Every text and every time has, in Judaism, its own specific melody. There are different tunes for Shachrit, Mincha, and Ma'ariv, the morning, afternoon, and evening prayers. There are different melodies and moods for the prayers for a weekday, for Shabbat, and the three pilgrimage festivals, Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot, which have much musically in common, but also tunes distinctive in each. And for the Yamim Noraim, Rosh Hashanah, and Yom Kippur. There are different tunes for different texts. There is one kind of cantillation for Torah, another for the half Torah from the prophetic books, and yet another from for Ketuvim, the writings, especially the five Megillot. Ah, <sighs> there is a particular chant for studying the texts of the written Torah, the Mishnah, and the Gemara. So by music alone, we can tell what kind of day it is and what kind of text is being used. Jewish texts and times are not color-coded, but music-coded. The map of holy words is written in melodies and songs. Music has extraordinary power to evoke emotion. The Kol Nidre prayer with which Yom Kippur begins is not really a prayer at all. It is a dry legal formula for the annulment of vows. There can be little doubt that it is its ancient, haunting melody that is given in its hold over the Jewish imagination. It is hard to hear those notes and not feel that you are in the presence of God on the Day of Judgment, standing in the company of Jews of all places and times as they plead with heaven for forgiveness. It is the holy of holies of the Jewish soul. Nor can you sit on Tishbaav reading Echa, the book of Lamentations, with its own unique cantillation and not feel the tears of Jews through the ages as they suffered for their faith and wept as they remembered what they had lost the pain as fresh as it was the day the temple was destroyed. Words without music are like a body without a soul. Oh, yes, words without music are like a body without a soul. Beethoven wrote over the manuscript of the third movement of his A minor quartet, the words Neue Kraft Vielend. Feeling new strength. That is what music expresses and evokes. It is the language of emotion, unsullied by the pale cast of thought. That is what King David meant when he sang to God the words, 
You turn my grief into dance. You turn my grief into dance. You remove my sackcloth and clothe me with joy. Hallelujah. That my heart may sing to you and not be silent, says King David. End quote. You feel the strength of the human spirit no terror can destroy. In his, in his book, Musicophilia, oh, by the way, that melody I was singing is a recording of my version of Psalm 30, which is what those words King David was speaking in Psalm 30. So if you look for Psalm 30 by Deborah Cohen Music, you can hear the words in an original melody that God gave me in a dream. All right, so let's get back to this text here. According to Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, in his book, Musicophilia, the late Oliver Sachs, no relative to Jonathan Sachs, alas, told the poignant story of Clive Waring, an eminent musicologist who was struck by a devastating brain infection. The result was acute amnesia. He was unable to remember anything for more than a few seconds. As his wife Deborah put it, it was as if, as if every waking moment was the first waking moment. Unable to thread experiences together, he was caught in an endless present that had no connection with anything that had gone before. One day, his wife found him holding a chocolate in one hand and repeatedly covering and uncovering it with the other hand, saying each time, Look, it's new. Look, it's new. It's the same chocolate, she said, honey. No, he replied. Look, it's changed. Look, it's changed. He had no past at all. Two things broke through his isolation. One was his love for his wife. The other was music. He could still sing, play the organ, and conduct a choir with all his old skill and verve. But what was it about music, Rabbi Sachs asks, that enabled him, while playing or conducting, to overcome his amnesia? He suggests that when we remember a melody, we recall one note at a time, yet each note relates to the whole. He quotes the philosopher of music, Victor Zuck Zuckerkandel, who wrote, quote, Hearing a melody is hearing, having heard, and being about to hear all at once. Every melody declares to us that the past can be there without being remembered, the future without being foreknown. Music is a form of sensed continuity that can sometimes break through the most overpowering disconnections in our experience of time. Faith is more like music than science. Emuna. Science analyzes, music integrates. And as music connects note to note, so faith connects episode to episode, life to life, age to age, in a timeless melody that breaks into time. God is the composer and librist. Or shall I say, this is a new word for me, libertist. Libertist. Must be liberty, libertist. We are each called on to be voices in the choir, singers of God's song. Faith is the ability to hear the music beneath the noise. And may I say, a lot of people that I know in the shul, they don't sing because they say they don't have a good voice. My, 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 is that what God says about you? And where did you hear that lie from? And why did you buy the lie? 
So music is a signal of transcendence. The philosopher and musician Roger Scruton writes that it is, quote, an encounter with the pure subject, released from the world of objects and moving into obedience to the laws of freedom alone, end quote. He quotes Rilke, quote, words still go softly outward toward the unsayable, and music, always new from palpitating stones, builds up in useless space its godly home, end quote. The history of the Jewish spirit is written in songs. I once watched a teacher, says Rabbi Sachs, explaining to young children the difference between a physical possession and a spiritual one. He had them build a paper model of Jerusalem. Then he played a song about Jerusalem on a cassette tape and taught the song to the class. At the end of the session, he did something very dramatic. He tore up the model and shredded the tape. He asked the children, Do we still have the model? And what did the children say? No! Do we still have the song? And the children replied, Yes! Yes! We lose physical possessions, but not spiritual ones. We lost the physical Moshe Rabbeinu, but we still have the song, Ha'azinu. So why are you reading it when it's meant to be sung? I'm talking to my Jewish brothers and sisters that don't sing Ha'azinu. Ah, my goodness gracious. I have Ha'azinu recorded um, in an MP3, or you can find it on YouTube. There's a video. Just go to my YouTube channel, at Jewish Rock Music, or look for Deborah Cohen Music, and then search for Moses Song by Deborah Cohen Music, or Ha, apostrophe, Azinu by Deborah Cohen. And I have a version, not for the whole Ha Azinu, just I think there's four or five verses that I, I heard the song in the spirit and recorded it. So my, in closing, my encouragement based on this article from Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, who can argue with what he has just said. And I often wonder why there are no instruments, uh, you know, tastefully done on Shabbat at most places, because some people say we're not supposed to have instruments, but David played the lyre, a stringed instrument, before the king, so why can't we play our skilled instruments, prophetically anointed, spirited voices, before our king? Don't wait for somebody else and sit there listening because somebody's told you that you can't sing. Yes, if you want to sing publicly before the people, you have to take your diamond in the rough, in this case your voice, we all have diamonds in the rough, and polish them to make them present, presentable. So... I thank you for listening. I hope something piqued your interest, that you'll take this information, bring it to your place of worship, and work on helping others to find their primal voice, to sing with the voice that God has given us. Thank you for listening, and I hope that you will come again next Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time for A Story and a Song, and please share because that's how other people discover my channel and my music. Thank you very much for listening. 
This land of my home Where the desert blooms life and song We can see the love of God In our garden of Eden With loving eyes of moral purity And have respect for all human life what we speak our words of love for our brothers and sisters near and far this place my home in my mind i'm still trying to find it what i'm seeing is not what john Imagined in the song, maybe it's only a dream, but I feel it in my bones a place, a place I can call home. So I will journey on to the land of the living soul. One day we'll be free and unafraid just to be with love all around us. No harm, no fear around me where we can walk easily in the joy. been taken from the rib of man that's when our world will be a place called home oh sweet oh 